So you might be curious what the point to some of this coding is. Uh, ultimately, I'm trying to reduce uh, the size of the blue bars here. I'm trying to make the engine more accurate overall in its play against a variety of human and engine uh, opposition. And to that end, um, you can see these are the variants at which um, my bot, Godelesher bot, um, tends to make a variety of mistakes. It tends not to make as many mistakes apparently at 960 as at virtually anything else, which doesn't make any sense to me, although there is a rather small sample size. I wonder what percent of those are games against me, although I don't play rated games against my bots, so probably not that. Either way, um, I discovered something recently, something, I don't know, that shouldn't have been too surprising, but I was pretty shocked by it. You can do a filter here for, like, or you can measure moves per game by variant. And here I am, here I've got my bot, my engine, that um, plays games that average this many moves. And it seems like this would be a reasonable density function to apply to um, the engine's time management in general. You'd think. Um, in any event, I think I'm going to try to adjust the time management of the engine not by using this graph here, but by having the engine play against itself. And we'll use this as a kind of inspiration to figure out which variants don't take like 40 to 50 moves per game. So the latest change was to say that anti-chess games um, we're going to budget 29 move, move horizon in terms of time estimation. Whereas a standard game you'd budget for 50. Because you know a chess game typically goes 40 moves, so 50 move. Uh, I should clarify, the, the times... Uh, the Recently people have been playing against my bot at a variety of time controls. And I've been noticing that you can score better at some time controls than at others. Uh, in particular, people are playing with a low time control with a high increment uh, are doing the best against it. So this is probably where I should focus my effort in terms of trying to improve the bot and make sure that it's not um, moving too quickly. It's budgeting enough time, despite the fact that I have it um, moving pretty quickly overall. Uh, so to that end, Today I created a branch uh, where I'm going to have it tune all four of these things. Uh, I think the name of this branch is Tune Move Horizon, so we'll just show off how to execute an SP SPSA Simultaneous Perturbation Stochastic Algorithm Tuning Session uh, for these four variants. So Atomic, Crazy House, King of the Hill, and 3Check. I apologize for this blindingly white uh, light screen. There's not much I could do about it. So here we go. That's the branch name. I forget. Um, I guess we'll find out in a second here. In fact, why don't I start this up? Um, so the reference bench number is how many nodes it should execute for standard chess throughout um, the course of a normal uh, benchmark suite. So we'll just verify that that does what it's supposed to do. Um, here's where the parameter list is going to go. So once this finishes compiling, oops, oops, I checked out the master branch, didn't I? Uh, yeah, we're going to need to check out tune move horizon. Um, my bad. Alright, so we'll have that compile and then get the parameter list from it. Which is just going to contain the single parameter, the move horizon. As well as upper and lower bounds for values for it to try. Um, so, 
I'm actually going to take the, what this provides me. Hmm. I'll have to think about this. But not too hard. We wouldn't want to hurt ourselves thinking. But, um... So here's our uh, parameter list. So for atomic chest, it's going to be this. Saying that we're going to start with the default value of 50. I think I should probably change that. Whoa, okay. Well, that rendered kind of strange. Um, here, let's start with the default value of like 30. Does that make sense? We're saying anti chess typically takes 21 moves to finish. Yeah, let's, let's see if I compile this for 30. It's no big deal. Um, so here we go. Here's our parameter list a maximum of 30, minimum of 0. I'm sorry, default of 30, minimum 0, maximum 60. S step size of the... You'll have to look up the reference algorithm. I don't feel like explaining it. Um, but yeah, these are the parameters we want to use for the test. Uh, so we'll use that. Instead of doing 10,000 games, we're going to cut that to 5,000 because if we haven't found an optimal value by after 5,000 games, we're not doing something right. We're going to use the Atomic Chess Opening Book um, Notes to move horizon. All right. So here we specified we're going to have this branch play against itself using SPSA, using um, these parameters for 5,000 games, using this alpha value, using this theta value. Um, so the final step is going to be x plus 3, x minus 3 playing against each other just to get a measurement as to uh, try to get some ideal value there. So let's give that a whirl. Um, so we can see here's the thing I just submitted. That's atomic. We're going to submit three more. Um, right. So our parameter. Oops. Okay. So I submitted atomic. What were the three others I was going to do? Crazy House. Crazy House is pretty popular. Let's pick that out of our list. Another tuning session, tuning for 5,000 games, using these parameters. Um, tune, move, horizon, is the branch name. Uh, playing against itself, not against the master branch. Uh, using the Crazy House opening book, our test signature, here it is. That's the magic number of test positions it's supposed to encounter during testing. Um, yeah, I don't know why the... Um, Yeah, the bench still works here. So why did the test command not execute the bench? Oh, because I disabled the... Okay, yeah, never mind. Duh. We're not actually executing the test during test.sh. I disabled that in favor of just doing the compilation. All right, so here's the branch name. Here's the test signature. Here, this is going to be crazy house. Variant um, to move horizon. So there's just two PCs working on all this stockfish tuning testing stuff for the benefit of the entire world. So uh, next, King of the Hill. Let's pick King of the Hill out of the list. 
that's not the branch name. To new horizon. All right. Uh, wait. I think I've. I forget if I specified five thousand games. Hopefully I did. Hopefully, yeah, number of games five thousand. I remembered. All right, so our parameter list. It's going to be King of the Hill variant. Uh, so we're going to take this and change atomic to K K O T H. And I think that's that. To move horizon. Standard test. Yeah, this is. I've never had to deal with the regression test. Those actually build up the benchmarks that are shown on the regression page, which I'll show afterward here, because we do have a minute to look at that. Um, pardon my scattered or addled thoughts. Um, I'm just exhausted. That's okay. King of the Hill, and the last one was three check. All right, three check chess. Branch name, branch name. Number of nodes, this number. All right, and this is gonna be SPSA tuning. And it's going to use this, except the variant name is 3-check variant. So these numbers 30, 60, and so forth are generated by some magic in C++ code. Um, I could explain it further, but you're not interested, so why should I? Uh, but yeah, if you're curious, search for SPSA on GitHub. You'll find several interesting repositories. You can also search uh, Google for the Google group for Stockfish development, and they'll give you all kinds of pointers about how to use SPSA, um, either standalone or using the fish test, I think is what this utility is called. This is a website that Fabian Victor's hosting and for variants. And the official Stockfish team has their own version of this, too. And I've studied the formulas enough to rewrite the documentation for alpha, gamma, or A, alpha, and gamma, and theta. It took me forever under to get some basic understanding of it to the point where I could improve the documentation to at least make sense to me. Probably it doesn't make sense to most people still, but... Um, at least we're able to use it. All right, so this is three check, assuming a move horizon of 30 plus or minus three. Um, we could look at that later, but let's see, can we make the throughput 420? We could, um, but then we might not get much done. <laughs> uh, uh, the jokes are so good. But yeah, we could increase the throughput to 420. But then, you know, our, our engine might just go rogue on us. That's when they all became sentient. So, um, yeah, so many people are asking, like, what's Stockfish's ELO? So, we'll say it started at zero and got somewhere up here. But, um, and this is for Crazy House, but you have all the other variants if you're interested. Um, I think, wait, no, I don't actually have a link to this anywhere, at least not in an easy to access place. You have to go to like one of these issues here to get access to it. Um, yeah. So kudos to him for creating that. I don't feel like closing it. Um... Okay, okay, so 
crazy house move ordering discussion. It's been open almost an entire year without a single comment. I left it open, but I don't really feel like discussing it. I mean, yeah, there is room for improvement. There's always room for improvement. That's why people submit pull requests and we review them. Um, mm, I could leave this open, I guess. I was tempted to close that today. It'd be so nice to get that closed. All right, signature per variant. Uh, yeah, I could actually close this. I fixed some bugs about a month ago where um, our tests returned different numbers based on the compile settings. Um, so fixing that was an ungodly nightmare, but we got it done. So now we get consistent results during testing and during actual execution. Um, but yeah, I don't think anybody cares about this issue anymore. You could create optimized builds of Stockfish or multivariant Stockfish for Crazy House, for Atomic, and so forth. But um, I'm not really motivated to do it. I'm already overwhelmed by people filing issues in this repository. I can't possibly keep up ahead of this, and nobody else is taking up the torch. Um, on the other hand, we've assigned it to him, but um, and he uh, is interested in it being addressed, but um, yeah, I don't think this is going to go anywhere. Nobody wants an optimized build right now, and I don't feel like producing them in the future, so let's close that. If there is interest, somebody can take up um, the responsibility of doing it, um, but I don't have the responsibility of taking care of that. Okay, here we got Seer One Chess, which I think ultimately got addressed in Fabian's Fairy Stockfish repo. Um, uh, okay. Ah, <sighs> Vinvin is saying maybe it's time to challenge Yes or. Is there somewhere you could play, I guess, against Stockfish? Um, hmm. Okay. Well. That's interesting. Oh, wait. In his variation. Yeah, so... I don't think that's happening anytime soon. Unfortunately. I mean, yeah, windboard.nl works great. Um... So that would be a site where this could be done. So six months ago, no, four months ago to the day, or more or less, um, this we are still commenting on this, but it's not advancing anywhere right now. I'm not tackling it in my repo, so let's close that. Sierra One Chess is fun. But, goodness, I am so overwhelmed by all this stuff that we have open. Actually, I don't need to leave this discussion point open another year. Let's dismiss that. We can always come back to these things if people have real ideas. Um, so, let's see. We Yeah, so here's just the rating history. That's the regression thing. And you can actually submit new regression tests to build data points for it. I've just never done so because I just don't know how it works. So I submitted my four tests. They're in the queue. That's all good to go. Um, you can see that my bot... Damn it, my bot's offline again? Really? Oh my goodness. Um, okay, what happened to my bot? What happened to my bot? Um, tail the last 
40 lines of this. Could this just be that, like, when Leechus bounces the site for their temporary updates, that just the bot here completely freaks out? <sighs> Incomplete read. Whatever. Um, we'll stop and start it. That seems to be a solution for things, right? I don't even know. Don't even know. There's my bot. It's back online. I fixed it. I'm so good. But yeah, why the hell did this go down? I don't get it. Something must have changed on Lee Chess's side, because I didn't change anything on my side. Um, so let's revert my local changes and check out master. Uh, and re-enable just the standard do the benchmark test after a compilation. Just so I don't forget to leave that enabled at some point. It's important that after I code a change, I can use that benchmark to make sure that I haven't broken standard chess. Um, I don't think we've had much commentary on what conditions should be used for testing changes. I don't think we've had much commentary on this lately because it's just been ultra successful. Um, we'll leave it open. I don't know. It's not a real issue now, is it? Parameter tweaks should probably have less strict bounds, but I'm sure unsure which ones to use. Used 08 before. Yeah, no, there's just a lot of good discussion here. We'll leave that open. There's a lot I still have to think about in that one. Um, benchmark positions for variance. Um, okay. Are we still lacking here? I think we have quite a few positions now, don't we? I mean, yeah, there's always more work to be done, but here's some anti-chess positions. Atomic, Crazy House, and so forth. Uh, well... Then we've got Relay Chess, which I never implemented, but apparently it's still in there. Um... How many files still have a reference to Relay Chess? Wait. Am I looking at the latest head here? Oh, no, I'm not. Okay, yeah, I've since removed uh, Relay Chess. Because I never coded it. It was a placeholder and never got anywhere. Um, I don't know, I think this is satisfactory. Well, not really, but I don't feel like addressing it. Um... It's something we'll eventually get around to. Actually, I'm not assigned to it, so let me not worry about it. Um, what more? Documentation. Um, I'll assign this to myself. Because I'm a masochist like that. Alright, so... I think that all the issues have been assigned more or less to somebody, or it's agreed upon that some things like this aren't going to be assigned. Um, or I'm just afraid of touching the issue for fear of backlash from everybody who like chimes in on these issues. Um, I like this idea of a feature ELO table. Despite the fact that it's going to be one hell of an effort for anybody to maintain it, and I don't feel like doing it, it's a fun idea. I just, um, it's about as arduous as things can get for very little return. I guess a better solution for this sort of thing would be if somehow this could be automated and integrated. Um into uh, the standard regression stuff that um, uh, 
his server does. The fish test thing. Um, yeah, if that could just be built into... Um, where was it? The regression table here? If this could add like a dimension for each feature um, and this could be automated in some way, then it'd probably be worth maintaining. Um, for what it's worth, the official Stockfish team is starting to add comments into the code saying how many points any given line of code is worth in terms of rating gain or loss. And I can't possibly keep track with that, with what I'm doing. Um, this has potential to get outdated very quickly. Uh, for just a laugh, let's open this up. So, yeah, here's how many rating points each thing's worth. Um, keep in mind that every time we tune anything, or any time um, I change a line of code, or merge anything from upstream, this is all subject to change. So, I mean, it's cool to see this is where uh, we gain or lose rating points. Um, but long term, I doubt that this is something that can easily be maintained. It's cool to know, though, I guess. It's very colorful. And knowledge is power, but uh, it's just not... I don't see a way that we could maintain this over time uh, because we're constantly merging things from upstream which change how things work. Um, it's cool that this is June 1st he did this. Um, so that's about two months ago. That's about three months ago. And I'm curious, in those three months, has anything upstream changed which would rock the boat with respect to any of those things? Like, we're completely changing the weights of capture histories and mixing search stats and evaluations and defining affinities for mixing stats and evaluations. And it's like, a lot of things are changing out from under us. And some of the things, like late move reduction, um, are being done a little bit differently than they used to be done. Uh, but perhaps the biggest recent change, if I had to guess, um, where was the search class? Search.cpp had a pretty exciting change recently. Um, is it this one? No. Although that's that messes with the transposition table, so that's going to have all kinds of wonky side effects on all the variants, too. Um, but no, there was a thing about voting for best move. So the search heuristics means of selecting a best move is no longer solely driven by a random number and an evaluation function. It's now driven by various threads where each thread gets a vote. Which I think is clever. It certainly lends itself to an ensemble methodology when I think ensembles are going to have a large promise for future in uh, chess AI. But um, yeah, this this thing forced me to rewrite or scrap a whole bunch of stuff that was coded into search.cpp for analysis for extending the principal variation. Because now this multi-threaded approach, um, each thread is voting on what the thread thinks the best move is. So threads are able to operate independently but still aggregate votes and it's not as if the most popular vote is always going to be the selected move. But, um, uh, I don't know, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of commentary, tons of testing that was done. 
probably zillions of action items resulting from it. It's been some similar things have been tried before. So um I don't know that I could really do this comment justice, but um <sighs> this is pretty amazing. I just don't know how in the world we're going to maintain this over time. Uh, there are a couple of negative values, so skipping features is beneficial. Mobility does not gain anything for Crazy House, which seems highly surprising, so there might be room for improvement there. Past Pawn bonus is also about ELO neutral for Crazy House. Yeah. Crazy House is a sharp game. Um, Alright. I introduced a tuning session for Crazy House Time Management. We'll see um, if time management changes and or changes upstream um, enhancements and bug fixes um, merged from upstream um, changes any of these numbers uh, no, I'm not going to be that specific as any impact. Uh, it's very possible that there's a lot of noise in terms of this table. So, um, why haven't I looked at the thing I'm most curious about? So, we've got insights. Uh, there's an insight for game termination, right? It says, like, uh, was this decided by resignation or checkmate and so forth? Um, and I'm really curious, when we lose games, how do we lose them? So, by variant. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess that's good news. What's this here? 6% clock flag and bullet. Really? How often do we clock flag an atomic? Dang. Okay. That's about 6% more than I thought it would be. Uh, apparently we disconnect 2% of the time in atomic. Which is just nuts. If you look at the size of the black bar, that's how many games we're playing. Um, did we seriously disconnect that much while playing Atomic? What the hell is that about? Alright, we have 2% clock fat flag in Blitz. And ditto in Bullet, or Ultra Bullet. That's amazing. I am just completely blown away that um, disconnects would be so common. I want to see part of that 2% of disconnects. Let's just filter this just showing things for which we have disconnected. And can this show me an example game? Um, under what circumstances is the engine disconnecting. So here's one with a mate and one. Here's another. Um, this is atomic. I don't see any like mate and one or anything here. I certainly don't see a pattern as to why the engine would disconnect. Um, but this got decided by disconnection. Black left the game. Played three months ago. Maybe these were all played three months ago? Could that have been it? Four months ago? There must have been something going on that was 
messing with these statistics, I guess. But yeah, some number of months ago, there were a number of games that apparently it disconnected. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's how we figure this out. We go over to um, Games Advanced Search. I want to find games where the bot lost by disconnection. Um, wait. Is disconnection not listed here? So I can only see it. I'm so confused. Mate, resign, stalemate, draw, clock flag, variant end. I don't see disconnect here. I guess clock flag is the closest thing, but that's not helpful. I wanted to see a list of games where it had disconnected. And. Uh, it's apparently something I can't search for. I'd have to download the PGN of all the bots games to be able to figure this out, I guess. That's unfortunate. Um. Hmm. Okay. I mean, yeah, we can see there are a hundred something games where it has lost on time. Um. The most recent of which was three weeks ago? Has my bot seriously not lost a game on time in the last month? Wow. Wow. Um. Okay. I did not expect that. Alright, yeah, thanks for watching, Railbird. It's been fun. Um, yeah, no, that's incredible that, like, in three weeks, there has not been a single disconnect. Now, has there been a game in the last three weeks? That's worth knowing. Um, how many games have we played in three weeks? date from three weeks ago until today. You can see how many we've lost. Oh, a bot's actually playing a game right now, apparently. There's one in the playing tab. Um, 7,000 games. This has played 7,000 games in the last three weeks and has only disconnected once. That was three weeks ago. I think... Um, well, I'm sorry, it's only clock flagged once. Which is just nuts. I mean... Okay, so here we're going to maybe see an example of this time mismanagement that I was talking about. Um... So, apparently not. Um, yeah, I think for variants, this is a larger problem, For but for this, it's okay. I think two things have happened. One, Lee Chess keeps improving their clock configuration and code and stuff, and lag compensation. But two, uh, for variants, in particular anti-chess, where people were challenging this to like 1 plus 4 all the time. Um, engine is now allocating... Well, it's now moving... Huh, this wouldn't affect the clock flags at all. Um, it's now allocating more time per move. Um, I guess I didn't need to do this more time per move uh, for like 3 check and other things because I have the bot uh, configured to pretty much move instantly. Um, but for anti-chess, it likes to spend its time. It's trying to win at all costs there. Um, regardless, so this is all running and well and good. Um, people pointed out that like some bot created a tournament recently. I don't know how that happened. Um, but it has been pointed out. So, sorry to keep 
bouncing all over the place. I'm not very well focused today because I'm just exhausted, but um, we had 11 open issues. I closed three of them. Um, I guess I should work on this. It just seems so overkill to like, create some documentation comprehensive stuff. Um, I've not recently used any GUIs. I don't know how to like configure your windboard or other client to work with this. Really the only thing we have to set is this UCI variant. Um, and most people trying to use the engine struggle with it anyway. Um, So I'm being asked for help with skid and such. Um, hmm. So this is example documentation. I'm kind of embarrassed to put it on the wiki because of how simplistic it is. Um, but that is documentation. Hmm. So, I don't know. I've seen several threads where people are asking how to use this offline for various looked into the wiki and the readme and could not find much on the variant specific differences in usage as compared to official stockfish. Um, so I list a few GUIs that are known to work with multivariant SF. That, that seems like a lot of effort. Um, it's not like standard chess where there are dozens of suitable GUIs. Um, fair point. Uh, I'll screw it. I'll put together something on the wiki. <sighs> I'm so tired, but we'll try to do something. Uh, how to contribute. Running a worker on Linux. I mean, people are able to run these workers, but the worker is pretty complicated. I can't fault them for not understanding it. Um, if you're interested to play, you can use building this goal and workflow. Um, how multivariant SF works. Um, hmm. Oh, fish test how this works. So I guess, um, hmm, hmm, <laughs> yeah, I'll augment this. Good gravy. Multivariant goal and workflow. Let's see, is it two line breaks between sections? Because that looks like three. Uh, I'm sorry, no, that is two. Um, so this is our standard workflow. Here's uh, usage. The only new parameter introduced for uh, variant play is um, UCI variant usage is as follows. All right, and um, let's get the source of this thing here. Good enough. Probably only need the last part here. Uh, 
Okay. Type UCI for a list of all parameters. Uh, use command UCI. And I just remembered how to do things like that. So how do I preview this? Okay. Usage as as follows. Set option name UCI. Uh, let's go back to editing. I probably don't need as follows. Um, here is an example. Great. It's probably fine. Um, editing home. Um, add example usage. Add set option UCI variant usage. Okay, good. Uh, except that's this is still going to be called home. The revision comment, the edit message, is that perfect? All right. So, yeah. Now we could figure out that crazy house, you still play E2, E3. Whatever. Um, but I tried to do something about this, and... Um, huh. Well, I'm kind of confused that my revision isn't somehow linked. Do these not use revision numbers for comments, or... I'm sorry, there's a history. There's an edit history for this. Um, is this number 497 should have linked me back to issue 497 here. I'm a bit confused why I didn't, but apparently these wiki history things, um, whatever. Why did this not link? I don't get it. Let's try this once more. Nope. I added example set option UCI variant usage in this comment. Okay. Great. Um, can I just link to the home page explicitly? I guess so. Yeah, I guess the wiki is truly an independent thing. Um, The only new parameter, I don't even need to further qualify that. The only new parameter is UCI variant. And its usage is pretty damn simple. So I don't know what's so confusing about it, but sure. There we go. And if you could figure out how to use this from a command line, um, I'm sure some GUIs will do better or worse jobs supporting it. Uh, you've wanted to try the grid variant. I guess I have too. Um, from a perspective of thinking that must be a very difficult variant to play, and one where engines will always outcalculate me, it could be kind of fun to watch it beat me. Um, but 
Yeah, in terms of like finding a GUI that supports this, I don't know. Now, I had a comment from somebody who was asking me about, I don't even remember what. There was something, they wanted to know something about how 3Check uh, communicated the position, I think. And whether or not a given version of the Windboard client was compatible with the given version of Stockfish, I think. I think I owe somebody that. Let me see if I can look that up here. <sighs> Sorry to be improvising things here. How long have I been going? We're stay hydrated, bot. I've been going for an hour, at least. Um. Oh, I have not been going for an hour. It just feels like an hour, because I started an hour ago. And then I bounced the stream about five minutes in when I realized I was doing a 60 FPS coding stream, which is just awesome. I must recommend doing 60 FPS coding streams. Um, okay, so we haven't reached a conclusion about Windboard not supporting Stockfish 3 check. Um, okay, so we got the Windboard startup dialog. We're going to play two engines against each other. Um, it just occurred to me that I don't have this showing everything I'm looking at. So let's look at that instead. So the question was, can engines play three check chess? I think the answer is yes. Um, second engine does not play this. Well, that was the last message I ever expected to receive here. You would think that if the first engine plays this, and the second engine is the f same as the first engine, you'd think um, that that would work. Stockfish, three check. All right, so these are the same engine though, right? So what the hell? Okay, let's go back into two machine mode. Yep. All right, so it just doesn't work. Apparently, I don't know. I'm just not configuring this correctly. But the, the question was um, whether or not this worked. And I guess the answer I'm going to tell my friend is it doesn't work, and then he'll report this to somebody who says uh, the actual way to do it. But, um, yeah, sorry for not knowing. Um, apparently it doesn't work, although I thought it did. Um, basically, I'm going to say, like, I know how my engine works, um, but there's just a lot more I don't know about how to wrap the wrapper of the wrapper of the wrapper of the wrapper for the engine. It's just so much to keep track of. Um, oh, we're already on master, so that's already been compiled. Um, and our test script has correctly gotten the signature that it should get. Um, which is the same as the reference bench that we thought we'd get at the start. That one ending in 440. So, coding successful. Successfully closed two issues, I guess. Um, is there anything more to say about any of this? Musketeer chess seems... Got the comments as of March 10th and back in March. Um, let's see. Comment on Fen format. Um, 
right. Okay. Um, well, this is interesting. Huh. Um. At some point, I do need to chime back in on that conversation, don't I? You tried to make an account, try out the musketeer chest, but it wouldn't let you. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Um. Uh, I don't know what to say. Like, certainly, if it could be done, Stockfish would be a reasonable template engine to start from. Um, but probably it's also overkill. And making a homegrown engine would probably work better. Um, yeah. So... Hmm... I guess we'll leave this issue open. There is a rule set. It seems like a complete pain in the butt to try to address the issue, but if people want to discuss it, I guess we'll leave it open for, I don't know, six more months or so. It's probably fine. Um, Alright, so the feature elo table We've got drawn end games incidentally i should look back into that at some point um what conditions should be used for testing changes hmm yeah we have quite a healthy discussion here That's a good thread to leave open. Alright, so I guess two of these have been assigned out to other people. The other six are technically in my court. Um, I guess we'll just see how that plays out. Um, I have been keeping up with these merges from upstream. And other than the Zizigi, uh seven-man table base change, um, everything else has merged pretty smoothly. Um, I'm still not sure what long-term I'm going to do about ZG. So when rated games are played, um, I can update these statistics here. I'm sorry, when rated games are played and analyses are run, I'm in a position to update these statistics. I think forget if rated games I think so I think rated games played without send upon loss info still could somehow be counted toward insights I don't remember if not I don't well I mean it seems like it should be doable in some way um, yeah it's let's take a look at this so you got opportunism and luck by variant so apparently uh, at King of the Hill Stockfish is not very opportunistic, so it misses a number of opportunities. Um, and how often does it get lucky by opponents who fail to get opportunistic? Well, in Atomic, apparently there's a lot which opponents overlook. It'd be interesting, well, I mean, I'm sorry, we looked at the other view in which Stockfish is almost always opportunistic. Um, I was going to say getting a matrix of um, luck versus opportunism um, per variant could be interesting except Stockfish is almost always opportunistic at 100% or near near it and is rarely lucky um, except for atomic chess which is just really hard 
I am surprised. Racing Kings should really have more luck and more opportunism here. Um, but I guess there's not a very large sample size, and the opponents who play it are fairly strong. So I guess that means a lot. Um, atomic Chess, though, that's amazing. So there's some kind of weakness in Atomic Chess. And if we broke that down... Um, here, let's filter this specifically for Atomic, right? Instead of doing this by Variant, let's do this by Opponent Strength. So, against stronger opponents, we're opportunistic. Against weaker opponents, we're also. But in the majority of our games, we're not very. And I don't know why. Um, can we filter this by date? There's got to be some explanation as to this center column. Um, date. Last month. Okay, there's not enough statistics. Last two months. Last six months. Yeah, so I'm just going to chalk this up to being stale data. That I just don't have the numbers and the data to explain uh, what's going on here. Similarly, for luck, there's just not much data to draw upon. Um, yeah, apparently, the single time that Stockfish made a blunder. Uh, the opponent pounced on it. That's unfortunate now, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, I think we just lack the data to do an appropriate estimation here. There it is. There's Stay Hydrated Bot. I knew you wouldn't leave me. Alright, so... You know, I think that's going to be enough coding for day. Which is good, because I've dismissed my terminal from which I could do the coding. Um, I was going to look at some other games today, but it's just been, I don't know, quite a busy weekend. 